Hello YouTubers. Now what I'm doing with this particular video is this is just this is gonna be the shortest one out, out, out of the lot of these. I'm just gonna literally show you how to prepare and clean the, the block, how to prepare and clean the head, and obviously be ready to stick back on. The next video then is gonna be how to bolt it back on and, and do all that. So all you basically need, some sort of rag and a sharp blade, and literally all this crud and crap, what you wanna try and do is I'm going to get the blade as flat as you can and scrape it all off. So I'm getting the blade flat and I'm just scraping it off just like that. See all that crap? Don't dig in at the blade. You, want, you, you can scrape it like that but you need to keep the blade flat so you're not causing any damage to anything. So you literally go around the whole of it. Getting all the crap, all the old part of the gasket off as you can see here, look all this take a few minutes so you know it's not going to be a five second job all that. Right, i'm not going to film the rest but that's basically it look we'll uh, we'll clean this and then we'll turn the grammar back on now as you can see we've got most of the crud and crap off and we've just wiped it in here to try and get as much water as we can off the next thing is now i'm going to maybe get a few comments on this but i've been doing this for years never had a problem and i can assure you it works it's okay get sandpaper this happens to be 180 grain sandpaper 120 is okay but i wouldn't use any more than 120 and try and get it as, as dry as you can and literally what you're doing you're just rubbing keep it straight you're just rubbing the sandpaper along all of it just like that this will just take off the rest of the crap. You can see it's kind of going shiny now. Now, there's no point in sending me comments. You can't fucking do that because do you know what? We can and we are and it's going to work. So, you know, no point saying anything. And uh, so that's it. So we're just going to go around with the sandpaper now. I'm going to go around it all, get it nice and shiny and then we'll tell you the next stage. Now as you can see, we've completely cleaned it. Now I know it might still look bad, but that is that is clean. It's nice and smooth. There's no humps or lumps or bumps or anything like that. Another thing you want to check is, you want to turn the engine, I can turn it by hand, and just check that the pistons come up to the top and it's nice and smooth. I'm just turning this by hand, so I haven't got a lot of room, but I can turn it enough. Now, so that's coming up. It's coming up level and that's coming up level. So that's good, there's no excessive play. You can put your fingers down the pistons, pull it halfway, like that, and check everything. So that's another good thing to check. And when we come to time it, there's another handy thing we can do before we put the head on. But one thing you have to do, which is very important, before you put the head gasket back on, where the bolts go through, you have to blow them out because what happens is water and oil is falling down there. If you tighten the bolt, the head bolt down there, if there's oil, you can actually, believe it or not, trap the oil and over the last squeeze you can crack the block. So it's very important to get an airline and blow out these. I mean, it is really important. The amount of damage you can do if you don't do that, it's not even worth thinking about. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. <laughs> this is what I mean, an air, an air blower. I'm gonna get this in the engine and not tease the pit bull with it. That's what you need to do. So you need to put it in the engine and not tease a pit bull. No, right, my own. Right. The easiest way to do it is, if you put down there and blow, it's gonna blow all the shit up all over you. So the way I like to do is get a rag, put the blower inside there, put the rag over the top, and literally blow. And you'll see, now, you'll see water and stuff's come out of there. So that's the way I like to do it. Now don't go in between these because this is the water to keep the engine cool. That will just keep blowing out. You need to only do it where the head bolts go down. So there's only 10 holes you need to do it to. And I like to just keep wiping it as I'm going along. So I know which ones I've done. So I know I've done four there. Five, six, 
seven, eight. Last one. Okay. Now. now that is now ready to receive the head. So that's all done. So you don't have to really do any more with that. Now if your timing belt had snapped, for example, this is a good time to actually look at your pistons. And again, do the same thing as I did last time. Lift them up to the top to make sure they haven't bent because what can happen is even though there's no physical damage on there you could have bent the conrod so make sure they are actually coming up. That's if your timing belt happened to snap for example. So that's just another quick thing. So anyway, so yeah, that's all ready to go and what I like to do is before is I like to put piston one to top dead centre because that is your timing mark. Now that's piston one to top dead center. I can literally put the head back on now, line up the mark I showed you um, on top of the head, and that's the timing done because piston one is on top dead center. So it's always good just to keep it there. We'll, we'll check the mark down below, but what I'm saying is if you can't really find the mark down below, you can take out the you can take out the spark plug, put a screwdriver down, twist the engine wait to see this come up top dead center and that's your bottom mark done so that's a really good simple thing as well so now we need to uh, sort the head out now what I'm doing here again is I'm just marking a piece of cardboard top and timing belt side so I'm just going to put these followers to one side because they are going to fall out what I'm going to do is do one at a time two bits come out put that one there and again, put them in the position they came off, and then you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong when you come to put them back on. On not every car you have to do this, just this particular model. Most of them you don't have to do this, but it's not a big deal. Just be careful you don't kick them out. Now. I know that's the top of the engine, this is the timing belt side, hence TV timing belt. So I know I can put them back up into place later on and they're going to be in the, in the right place. So just move that off to the side and be careful with that. Now, the next thing we want to do is um, we'll do this on a shelf. Now, this is obviously the underside of the head, and we had a problem with this head gasket. Now, this is a good sign to see where exactly has it failed. But before, I, before I see that, so this is your head, this is your valves here. And it, again, if your timing belt has snapped, you'll see these valves are now seated down flush. If your timing belt had snapped, you would see daylight and some of these bent. But we're not going to get into that, but I'm just basically showing you that while we have it. Now. I'm just looking at this and to be fair from the first looks of this it doesn't actually look too bad I can't see any physical signs of wear because sometimes what happens is finish you finished dog can I uh, continue yeah can I continue yeah yeah right so it right Sometimes what happens is they, they split here or they split here. You can physically see a crack or a split or wear. But to be fair to this one, I actually can't see anything. First off, anyway, that looks like it's bad. But actually when you look down into it, you can start seeing it separating. So it's separated there. So it's just rust it's just well not rusty but it's just gone there and if you look down there you can actually see it separating you see these bits coming off here so I'd say the water is getting in in between it yeah again look you can see bits of it hopefully it's coming across on camera but basically it's just it's just corroded basically that's what's happened with that one 
Now we know the head gasket's definitely gone because we can see the signs of it. From the first video, you'll see the actual signs of it. So basically what we're doing now again, we're doing exactly the same thing, cleaning this. But with this, we need to clean it first before we can test to see if it's warped. If a head is warped, you have to get it skinned. It's as simple as that. If it's not warped, I don't care what anyone says, you don't have to get it skimmed. It's as simple as that. So there's only two ways. Get it skimmed if it's warped, if it's not, don't get it skimmed. End of story. Some cars actually as well, when you skim them, you fuck up the head. So some cars, once the head is gone, you have to replace it with a second hand head. A BMW comes to mind, a 7 Series BMW. Some Passat, some of the older Passats as well come to mind. Um, I'm sure there's more, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. So, some cars you can't skim. But before we test see if this is what we have to clean it. We're going to clean it the exactly the same way as we cleaned that, with a blade first, then a little bit of sandpaper, and then um, we'll check to see if it's warped. Now, as you can see, this is all nice and clean. Now, don't start putting heavy sandpaper on this. 120 is max. I use 180. If you're even worried, you can even go finer again, use 400. Um, but believe me, 180 is absolutely fine. If you start using 60 and 80, you're going to do damage. Um, but anyway, so that's all nice and clean now. One thing that I did forget to say is if, if you've got a head gasket that's gone, but you can't see any physical signs of the head gasket cracked or got a hole in or falling apart like ours is, it is best to check that you've got no cracks in between any of these holes because you could find that it's your head that's cracked more so than your head gasket that is gone. I can see signs of that head gasket wearing, so I'm pretty certain, you can't be 100% certain, but I'm pretty certain that it's not a problem with the head. So you literally check all the gaps, make sure there's no like uh, wearing marks, there's no cracks, it's not eaten away, it's nothing like that. This one looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is test to see if it's warped and it's very easy. Now a way to test that the head is warped is you need a good metal ruler that's longer than the head. You want to make sure you've got a nice straight edge, it's not bent or twisted or anything. And a good torch. And all you do is you go diagonals. You put the, the ruler diagonally across and with your torch what you're looking for is to see if light shining through. So if, if I go up here and you can see light shining through like that and it's not shining through down here, you know your head is warped. So that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to press down on this and I'm going to shine the torch. Oh. See, and you can see it in there, but that's because there's a hole there, so. Let's start again. See, it's shining through, but it's not warped. So I'm just going to. Right, ready? So, you need to see if it's shining through. And obviously it's going to shine through there. Okay, there. Okay, there. And there. Now, you do it on the next diagonal as well. So again, check it. That's all good. Also, you want to check straight across. So we've done two diagonals and straight across. And there you go. I can't see any light coming through there. So I know that head is not warped and I know I can put that back on and not have a problem. If it's warped, you can get it skimmed and depending on where you live, around here you're talking between 100 to 150 euros to get the head skimmed. And it's not, you don't necessarily need to do it. And it's, it's a waste of money if you don't need to do it. So you'll know also because if you let the head gas go too long and the car starts overheating, there's a good chance, if it's overheated a few times, there's a good chance it's maybe warped. But if you've just got it and you're losing water and you haven't let it overheat, then there's a really good chance you don't have to get it done. I'm not going to skim this and I guarantee you it's going to be absolutely fine. The thing you need to know about head gasket is they're all more or less the same. Um, this one happens to say top on it. 
some of them do, some of them don't, but you can really only put them one way. So you can't really go wrong with these. You put no sealer on it, right? They seal themselves. Some have this like little bead of sealer around. So you, you don't do anything. You just literally clean both surfaces and you put it down. And you'll know if it's the right one because you can obviously measure it against the old one. But once you put it down on it, as you can see, all the holes are lining up. So we know we're right and we're clearing the pistons. It's, it's, so it's right. So that's a good thing. So um, that's basically all for this one now. And um, what I'm going to do is the next video is going to be obviously putting it all back together. That's thunder in a tin roof shed. So we're going to excite a few hours here. And it's close. So anyway, look, that's it. Next video is going to be putting it all back together and then that's going to be one video and then last video then is going to be putting the timing belt on and hopefully it starts and we're all good. So subscribe, thumbs up the video, hope you enjoyed it, don't forget, get your hands dirty. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh Now, we've had about three minutes of heavy rain. Three or four minutes, that's it. I'm just leaving up the door now. And as you can see, we are completely flooded. There's my jet wash there. Just stop the door. There's my jet wash there, as you can see, absolutely flooded. And we've got a big wave just stopped in front of the shed. And that was only after a couple of minutes of rain.